Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Had a, an amazing song today. We'll learn how to play Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone by Cinderella, the great Tom Kiefer. By the way, Tom's first name, his actual first name is Carl. So, he has something in comment there. Carl Kiefer, I think that's a, that's a very catchy. I don't know why he didn't keep that. But uh, Tom Kiefer's pretty cool too. But anyway, so... We are going to be doing this song. So I'm kind of doing just, you know, just the, the basic chord structure. I know there's some electric guitar stuff, some fills going on, and that kind of stuff going on. But uh, really, for the most part, they're just kind of playing through these same chord structures that I'm going to show you here. Um, and you can do it, just play it on electric if you want. Um, but I will be taking a look at Tom's solo note for note, too, at the end of the lesson. I'll be switching to electric for that. All right, but um, we're going to get through the whole song here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so you know when we send a new video, uh, so you can like and comment and help me out with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, if you enjoy these song lessons that I put up every week, um, join my Guitar Academy. It's the best way to support anything I do online. You'll see a link to it in the description below. Um, that'll give you a free seven-day trial to my Academy. And if you don't know what my academy is, it contains all of my guitar courses covering everything from complete beginner stuff to uh, more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory. Uh, there's a complete guitar tone course there as well. Plus, you get personalized support from me. So uh, please go over there and check it out. All right, so let's jump into it. I'm in standard tuning here. And um, so we have this little intro that's obviously done on piano. So it's uh, just an approximation of a... goes into the verse which is really really and this song how it's laid out the chord progressions are not your standard kind of ways of doing stuff it's very unique uh it's very cool very creative um so it's a lot of fun to kind of dissect this thing so we're gonna start with just an a major chord and then we're gonna from there this is just the intro so just what was usually on the uh you know on the piano from there, just go to an E major chord. So this is like A. And there's a little fill played on the piano that's pretty easy to do on guitar. So you can kind of do that on top of this E. So you play the E, and then you play the open E string, hammer on the second fret on the high E string. Then pick that finger back up and just pick across the high E to the B to the G. So, so, right, so it's similar to what's going on with the piano there. Then we go to an F sharp minor. So this is a full bar at the second fret here. And in front of that you'll play the fourth fret on the A and a four on the D. From there we go back to the E major chord. And then to a D major chord. So, so far we have this. Alright, so it's basically at this D, you can just kind of, kind of arpeggiating it on the piano. It's kind of fun to just... They do some of this in the song when they actually bring in the guitar, which they're getting ready to anyway. So it's kind of just a, a D chord. You can pick up the note on the high E string and make it a D sus two, the open high E, <clears throat> and hammer back on there. Then, and then to the A. And then he does some of the same thing here, even on the guitar, the same treatment to the A chord, which is just you make it an A major first. And then make an A sus2 by just picking up the note on the B string. And then hammering back on. And sometimes it goes back to the sus2 chord. So it's kind of all together for this intro leading into this uh, the verse, which looks like this. Do whatever you want on those A and then the D. 
Mm-hmm. Alright, so from that A, we get to the verse. So I'm gonna do it like that. I'm obviously singing at an octave lower. I can't really. I mean, he's got a one in a, a one in a billion voice. I mean, to be able to sing like that with that kind of tone, that that that. I can't tell you that. I'm not going to do that the whole lesson that I, I'd like to be able to talk the rest of the day. So anyway, so I'm singing it on an octave lower, so it might sound a little bit weird. So we're going to start with this E major chord. And then it goes up to the F sharp minor. So that's a... Now back to the E. And then we have that same chord, that kind of sequence that we did in the intro, that F sharp minor to E major to the D. And then the A. Remember, you can kind of do those little sus, little variations in there. So all together for the, so it's pretty similar to what we did in the intro there at the end. So we have this, so uh, I can't tell you, baby, what went wrong. I can't make you feel what you felt so long ago. I'll let you show. Let's repeat it. Then we get to the pre chorus here, and it looks like this. If we take some time to think it over, baby, take some time, let me know if you really want to go. Alright, so we're up at a B minor chord here for this first chord in the, in the pre chorus. So it's got a second fret bar here across five strings from the high E down to the A. Now in front of that bar, you'll play the third fret there on the B, so three on the B, four on G, four on D. And that'll give you a B minor chord. So we have that chord first. Now from there, we're going to go to that F sharp minor bar chord, which remember is just a bar chord across all six strings. We've done it already. So we rotate between those two chords a couple times. So if you've gone through from B minor to F sharp minor twice, then you go to the E. And then the D. The D leads us into the uh, chorus. <coughs> So all together one more time for the pre-chorus. If we take some time to think it over, baby. If we take some time, let me know if you really want to go. All right, then we get to the chorus. Now this chorus is... It's pretty unique. You sometimes uh, the first time you play the chord progression is different than you than the second, third, and fourth time through the progression because you basically the, a full chorus is four times through the progression. 
So the first one is different. Plus in the middle, the timing of the chords changes after the second one. So it's just very unique how, how he's laid out. It's not something you hear every day. Uh, but yet it sounds really musical. It's just a beautiful song. So uh, I guess he just let it go where it wanted to go and it, it worked really well. All right, so basically we have this. Don't know what you got. So what is different about this? So we start out with this A major to the E. So we've done that before. So the first time in the chorus, we do this. D, then play this little moving bass line here, this C sharp here on the A string. So we have this D major chord. And then grab that fourth fret there with your pinky on the A string to the B minor chord. You'll hear an elect electric guitar is playing at this point is like kind of plays it as like a little single note riff with it just that bass line but so that's a all right and then we start that over again except those last three chords are different now for the second third and fourth time through the progression so that's that same F sharp minor E to D progression that we did before. Okay, so that's the second time through the progression. There's different ending, different three chord ending, and that ending is going to stay the same for the next two times through. So very unique. So we have this. Here, when you get to that D chord, he holds it for a little bit. So that's different there than the transition we're going to do in a second. When we come back around and start doing the same chord progression we did for the third time. He doesn't hold the D very long, immediately goes back to the A. So the, the timing of that D is now changing between the from the second between the second and third repeats it's he holds it and between the third and fourth repeats he, he quickly goes um, back to the A so that D doesn't last as long so like I said it's changing how long each chord lasts and the progression is it's it's it's, it's pretty cool it makes it, the melody have a very unique quality about it so let me see if you can pick that up I'm gonna play the whole chorus here and see if you can pick the timing of that D up um, but if you know the vocal phrasing well, you know it's like why he had to get back to that A chord real quicker. So we have this all together. suspended thing and then it goes back to the verse again so there's really um, nothing new we go through the verse and pre-chorus again and the chorus again so just avert the same things that we just covered um, the next new thing that we have is the bridge that comes in right before the solo all right so that looks like this comes 
in there. All right, so that is just that. So this is just the bridge that happens right before the, the rhythm changes a little bit. A little bit more straightforward. Um, just this, so instead of a B minor chord, if we did move it up two frets to a C sharp minor chord. So you play that. To that A. Alright, and then back to the same C sharp minor again. Now here, typically I see him when he plays it, you can't go to, a, to an E major chord down here, but you can see that goes to this, it really kind of sounds like he jumps up here. Uh, open E, seventh fret on the A, nine on the D. 9 on the G, open B, open IE, so it's just the E power chord. Kind of just that whole line he holds on that E chord. So that E is held pretty uh, longer than you would imagine, and then it goes to the D. So all together for this progression. Get to the solo. So before I pick up the electric real quick, uh, there is a the, the we've got to cover the chords underneath the solo. It's very similar to the uh, um, the pre-chorus. Uh, but what's going on here? You know, remember in the pre-chorus we add B minor to the F sharp minor twice, and then that added E to D ending leading into the chorus. It's the same thing except that B minor to F sharp minor thing, instead of just done, being done twice, it's done four times. So we have this. and then the chorus just repeats uh, like we did it earlier, but it just kind of repeats uh, longer at the end of the song. All right, so let's jump into the solo real quick. I'm gonna grab uh, my electric and I'll be back in a second. <laughs> So a beautiful solo there, just got by uh, Tom Kiefer. So let's jump into it. So we had this first phrase, looks like this. So we're gonna slide from seven to nine on the A. Then we play seven, uh, on the D string we play seven, nine, seven, and back to that nine. Then you go over to the seventh fret there on the G string. Um, turn this delay off. Um, just a slight bend on that seventh fret there on the G. And back to the nine on the D. Alright, from there we have this little bluesy type lick. So we have this. So it's a bend at the ninth, 9 on the G. So over to 7 on the B. Uh, seven on the, then roll over to 7 on the high E. Then 
and play 10 on the B. Back down to 7 on the B. 10 on the B. Bend and release. I'm going to end it right there on the 7. So we have this. So all together. So I think I got it. After that, that bend on the slight bend on the G resolves back to the 9 on the D. When I play through it, I'm not sure if I left that out or whatever. So wait a second. All right, next phrase. So we start here at the ninth fret on the D. Put that nine on the D, and then you're gonna play six on the G. Six hammer seven. Pull, pull back off to the six. Then back to the uh, nine on the D. And then you go up six, seven, nine on the G. So then you basically go up that six, seven, nine, come back down to the seven. So. And then we do a quick little another hammer from six to seven, pull back off of that six on G. So. So after that, we go back to the nine on the D, and then back to the six on the G. So all together. Then jump over here to the D string. It's going to play 7, 9, 7, 9, pull back off the 7. This section with so that's hammering two to four on the D to two on the G then four you pick that again and bend it up a whole step release that bend and we have a hammer on pull off here from hammer two to four on the G pull back off the two so all together for that section, that little phrase. All right, next uh, phrase. All right, so this is a little bit of a rake that starts at across a B minor triad. So this is the nine on the D, seven on the G, seven on the B. So, it, so what we're gonna do is kind of slightly palm mute those notes. So you just hold it like this, right? Slightly palm mute and then just rake with a downstroke across those three strings. So it's kind of like a sweep, but when you, when you generally do it like this, they call it a rake. See how muted the notes are? So, so after you get to that B string, then you play 7, so, so, so you go to that 7 on the B, it goes 8, 10, 8, so... And then we have this. That's going to be back down to that seven, hammer on eight, pull back off to seven, pull off nine, seven on the G. So it's a quick little five note lick that he ends the freight. So this. Hey, 
And then we go into what is really kind of a, an oblique bend where you're bending up one note. So you bend up the, a whole step on the uh, ninth fret on the G. And then you ideally you can just grab that 10th fret, but I don't do that. See how out of tune that is? I release it, that the G string there, it goes back in tune. So I got a floating trim system here. He's using a Les Paul, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, so when I'm playing it, you see me go. I kind of do the ninth fret bend on the G, and then re le release that when I play the tenth fret there on the uh, on the uh, B string, and then back into that ninth fret. Or you can go. I just done sound great on this guitar. So we have. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing, but it's not at the seventh fret. We're up here at the. The F sharp minor arpeggio at, at the little triad here. At the uh, so you're playing the 16 on the D, 14 on the G, 14 on the B. So it's the same lick. So the same thing we did here. Just do it here at the 14th fret. But the notes he grabs at the end are going to be. Which is a whole stab bend at the 17th fret there on the uh, B string. But then grab 17 on the high E, and then just no bend there into a whole stab bend at the 17th let B again. Alright, so they kind of complement each other. All right, from there we have this ending. All right, so that starts with this. So that's just pulling off 15 to 14 on the B, and then go over to 16 on the G. So you do that three times. From there we have this, which is just 14, this is on the G string, we have 14, 16, 14, hit a couple times, over to the 16, hit twice on the D, and then 14, sorry this. You're gonna end the solo there with a. So that's kind of sliding into the uh, 16th fret on the D. And then play that 14, 16, 14 on the G again. And then bend that 16 up. We do those one of those oblique bends again. So that's kind of. You can, like I said, you, if you have a guitar that's not floating, you just bend the note up 16th fret on the G and then hit that 17th fret on the B string with it. And then so you do the bend, pick the B string, and then do the bend again. And then he he plays them both together at the same time, which sounds okay. I can do both of that because when you're not isolated, it doesn't sound that bad. So we're just playing the, the oblique bend, hitting both strings, and doing that bend on the G string. Resolve that bend, release it. Just play 14 on the G. So we have this. And it's back into the chorus for the end of the song. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a great song with some uh, just great melodies, uh, some unique chord progressions, and a really nice solo. So uh, hopefully it's a fun song for you to get underneath your fingers. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.